Hi, and welcome to Straight Shot Radio. My name is Johnny Slick, and I'm the founder and head coach at Straight Shot Training, a remote personal training company with an emphasis on helping people of all fitness levels feel better, move better, and live better with progressive functional strength and conditioning workouts. Sleep. We spend a third of our life doing it, yet it's something that many people still have trouble doing correctly. Now, we know the recommended amount of sleep for adults is six to eight hours, yet one third of Americans get less than six hours of sleep consistently. It's clear that we have an issue with sleep deprivation in adults, too, because they spent an estimated $52 billion on sleep medications, sleep aids, and sleep remedies in 2020, and that's just in the U.S. I ask my athletes about their sleep all the time. Most of the time, they admit they could get more or better sleep. Many notice their lack of sleep when it comes to their mood, or maybe their productivity at work, or their academics if they're a student, maybe it's their focus, or just how they feel in general after a bad night of sleep, or multiple bad nights of sleep in a row. But what is all of that lack of sleep doing to your physical health? Is your lack of sleep affecting your workout performance? Is it sabotaging your weight loss? Could you be losing muscle mass and gaining body fat even though you're eating right and training hard during your workouts? In this episode, I want to explain just how this lack of sleep is negatively affecting your health and give you some ideas on how to improve your sleep to change how you feel, perform, and manage your weight. Really quickly though, sleep is a lot like your workouts. You know you need to do it, but there are times that you need someone to hold you accountable to make sure you're actually doing them. Well, that's what we do here at Straight Shot. My coaches write programs that include sleep and recovery surveys so we can make sure that you're recovering just as smart as you're training. So here's how you get started. First, you head to straightshottraining.com and you click on request a coach. There's buttons all over the website that say request a coach. Just click on one of those and fill that out. Next, I'll personally reach out to you We'll chat about your goals, your training history, and your equipment inventory so I can match you up with one of my coaches. Then, they'll contact you to get everything they need to design a 100% custom program based around you and your needs. After that, you'll have your training program on our app, which includes demo videos, workout logging, exercise history, a training journal, and a messaging portal so you can actually contact your coach at any time for help. Then as you go through your workouts, your coach is going to check in with you to make sure that everything's going well, that you're recovering well, that you're sleeping well, and they'll make changes to your program along the way to make sure it's working for you and that you're making progress. If you need more guidance from there, you can do virtual personal training sessions with your coach where they'll demonstrate your movements, monitor your form as you exercise, provide encouragement, and make sure that you're pushing yourself correctly. These sessions are also going to be another way that your coach is able to hold you accountable to your workouts, your recovery, and your overall fitness. You're going to hear a lot today about this relationship between your sleep and your fitness. So let a Straight Shot coach help you with both by heading over to straightshottraining.com and clicking on Request a Coach to get started today. All right then, let's get into how sleep deprivation is affecting your fitness and what we're going to do about it. So as I stated in the intro, a lack of sleep is going to have a wide range of detrimental effects on your overall health, on your mental health, your emotional well-being, your sexual health, your relationships, your job, your academics if you're a student. There's so many things that are going to be affected in your life if you are not sleeping enough. And how much is enough is going to depend on the person, but typically six to eight hours is what you want to shoot for as an adult. But honestly, seven to eight, seven to nine is better to shoot for. Once you start getting down into six, if you are supposed to sleep eight hours, if that's what your body wants, and you're depriving up depriving it of 25% of the sleep it should be getting by only sleeping six hours, you're going to see these detrimental effects of sleep debt or accumulated sleep deprivation. If you are a person who typically sleeps eight hours and you get a night of six hours, you know what I'm talking about. So there's all of these things that are affected by a lack of sleep. But for today's episode and sticking to what we typically talk about on this show, I want to look at a couple of things here in regards to 
your workouts, your recovery, and your weight management. So we're gonna to look today at athletic performance or how do you perform in your workouts and in your sports if you are sleeping correctly and how those things are affected when you aren't sleeping correctly. We're also gonna look at weight loss. If you're trying to lose body fat, if you're trying to manage your blood sugar, how are those affected by a lack of sleep? And then finally, we'll finish with muscle mass. If you are working out and eating correctly and you're not gaining muscle mass like you should be, you're probably not sleeping enough. That could be one of the causes of it here. So athletic performance, weight loss, and muscle mass will be what we're focusing on today, but please do not discount all of the other issues that arise when you aren't sleeping correctly. These are just a couple of them, but there are so many reasons why you need to take a good look at your sleep and make sure that you're getting enough sleep. So on the website sleepfoundation.org, there's an article called Sleep, Athletic Performance, and Recovery that does a great job of compiling all of these different studies on sleep and the lack of sleep and how it affects athletes in their sport and all of that is all together in that one article. So I wanna make sure that I give that website credit for a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be pulling from today out of that article. So sleepfoundation.org, check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff on that website. So we know that sleep is essential for everyone's overall health and well-being. Everyone needs to sleep in order to feel restored and in order to function their best the next day. When it comes to athletes, it's going to be even more important because they are exerting themselves even more than the average person. But before we get into this today and you start thinking, well, this doesn't affect me because I'm not an athlete, all of these things that I'm getting into when it comes to athletes and sleep and athletes and lack of sleep are going to affect you in some way as well. If you are working out and you have fitness goals or you're dieting, or you're trying to gain muscle or you're trying to get stronger, if you're working out, to me, you're an athlete. You might not be working out to the extent that a, a competitive athlete is, but you're, you are working out enough that you need to recover and look at your recovery the same way an athlete does. If they're focusing on their workouts and the nutrition, you're focusing on your workouts and your nutrition in a different way, you both need to also be focused on your sleep. When you sleep, you allow your heart to rest. You allow your cells and your the tissue in your body to repair. And this is going to help your body recover after physical exertion. Also, as you progress through the different stages of sleep, there are changes in your heart rate and in your breathing rate that are going to promote cardiovascular health because your body is allowed to finally rest after you've been exerting it throughout the day and in your workouts. Sleep is also going to help you prevent illness. It's going to keep you from getting sick. You have to have enough rest for your body to produce cytokines, which are these hormones that help regulate your immune system to fight off infections. The less sleep you get, the less of those hormones are produced, and the more likely you are to get sick. So you need to sleep just to keep from getting sick and to allow your heart and your respiratory system to have a chance to relax and repair. And that's not even that's even before we get into your sport performance and your muscle mass and all of that other stuff. So just from a base level, you've got to have that sleep in order to have those restorative effects that are important in your recovery. Now, when it comes to your mental health, along with your fitness, there are these pathways in your brain that allow you to learn and make memories. And if you don't get enough sleep, these pathways can't be made. You, you can't form or maintain these pathways that, that allow you to learn new skills or to help you form memories. So if you are trying to learn a new lift or if you're playing a sport and you're trying to learn a new move or a skill or if you're just in the gym and you're, you're working on your form and all of your, all of your other exercises that you're working on, if you don't have enough sleep, you're not actually going to be able to learn and maintain that better form. Now, it used to be thought about sleep that your body just kind of turned off at night. And now we know that there's actually portions of your brain that are more active while you're sleeping than when you're awake. And if you think of it, I heard this on a podcast the other day on sleep. If you think of your brain as a computer and all the information that's coming in is like cluttering up your desktop. And while you sleep, you are putting all of those different icons all over your desktop into folders. And it's why the next day after you wake up, sometimes you can't remember certain things that happened the day before, but sometimes you can have a clearer 
view on something, like when you say, hey, I'm going to sleep on it, you can have a clearer view of something because your brain is carp compartmentalized all of the things that you took in the day before or days before and kind of put them into a nice well-packaged folder and the rest of the stuff, the junk, the clutter, it throws into the recycling bin on your computer. So when you sleep, it helps your brain kind of defragment stuff and get things where they need to be in your brain so that you can then take those things that you learned and apply them in future bouts of exercise or future games or whatever it is that you're doing. Well, when you don't sleep, you can't do that efficiently. It's like a bunch of junk being on your desktop. And it's why when you have day after day after day of reduced sleep that you kind of feel foggy, you can't focus on things, you can't remember things, it's because there's just a whole bunch of junk in there that needs to go through that defragmenting cycle while you're sleeping. Along with that, there are some other cognitive processing factors that decline when you sleep less. And this is going to have an adverse effect on your ability to quickly make decisions or adapt to new situations as an athlete. So there's our mental health side of this today when it comes to you being an athlete in any type of athletic level. You have to have sleep in order to be able to have the brain function necessary to perform complex movements in the gym or on the field. So how does sleep affect athletic performance, the actual physical side of it here? So both increased quality of sleep and quantity of sleep is going to help athletes improve their performance. So before we get into what it looks like when you don't sleep, let's look at what it looks like when you do sleep well. There was a study that Stanford did on men's basketball players who extended their sleep to 10 hours a night, and they found several positive outcomes in these players. They ran faster when they did a half-court and a full-court sprint. Their shooting improved by at least 9%, which is huge. Uh, this is both, they tested uh, free throws and three-point shots. So 9% improvement on your three-point shot is crazy as an athlete just by sleeping more. And these athletes also reported physical and mental well-being by sleeping those extra one or two hours on top of what they were normally sleeping. When it comes to swimmers, there was another study done on male and female swimmers who extended their sleep to 10 hours as well, and they saw even more performance improvements. Their reaction times off the diving blocks were faster, their turn times improved, their kick strokes increased, their times swimming a 15-meter sprint those were also improved. And these athletes also, same thing, experienced improved mood and decreased daytime sleepiness and fatigue by sleeping more. There was another study done on varsity tennis players, both male and female, who increased their sleep to at least nine hours a week, and they also performed better. They were more accurate. Their accuracy went from about 36% all the way up to 42%. And same thing, these players experienced less sleepiness during the day as well. There was another study done on female uh, netball players and male soccer players who demonstrated that better sleep hygiene education helped these athletes increase their overall sleep time and this adequate sleep before a competition all improved their top performance. So, by the way, sleep hygiene, episode 33 of Straight Shot Radio, if you go back and listen to that one, it explains everything all about sleep hygiene. But in all of these studies, they found that the better sleep and the more sleep these athletes were getting, the better they were performing in their sports. And honestly, the same thing's going to happen to you if you try to get some more sleep. I don't know if you can get 10 hours, but even just sleeping a little bit more is going to help you out a lot. So that's what it looks like when you are sleeping correctly as an athlete and as a person who's working out. But let's look at what happens if you are not sleeping enough or you have poor quality of sleep. You're waking up a lot. You are not sleeping very deeply. You're waking up tired. All of those signs of poor sleep quality. So you're going to have, of course, the mental effects of it. You're not going to be able to quickly react and think clearly. People who are sleep deprived are more likely to make poor decisions and take more risks. A lack of sleep also increases irritability and risk for anxiety and depression. And then, of course, we have the physical side of it that we're looking at now. It's going to increase your risk of medical concerns, uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney disease, even a higher instance of stroke in people with sleep deprivation. So as we've seen, sleep has these 
positive effects on athletic performance. The lack of sleep is going to have similar but detrimental effects to an athlete's performance. When it comes to inhibited ability, there was a study on male team sport athletes, there's multiple sports on of male teams at this one college, and they purposely sleep deprived these athletes for a period of time for this test and notice that their average and total sprint times decreased when they lost that sleep. Also decreased accuracy is concerned with athletes if they're not getting enough sleep. Male and female tennis players, and we saw that study earlier where the more they slept, the the accuracy rate improved by 6%. Well, they had a decreased serve accuracy of up to 53% when they lost sleep. So they compared the athlete's uh, sleep times and when they lost sleep, they had this decreased serve accuracy of 53% when they were performing after those poor nights of sleep. Athletes also get tired faster if they haven't gotten enough sleep. So a test was done on male runners and volleyball players and both groups of athletes exhausted faster during their sports than the group who slept enough time. So I'm not exactly sure what the hours were, but the ones who got less sleep exhausted faster because their bodies weren't able to recover and they had poor power output the day after they didn't sleep very well. And that's even after just one day. Imagine what this looks like if you don't sleep well for a week or for weeks on end. There was also a decreased reaction time in a study of male collegiate athletes, so a lack of sleep adversely affected their reaction time in several different sports. There was also a study done on athletes where they had to, they tracked how fast that they were making decisions of whether they would pass the ball or take it to the net themselves or change routes if they were running, maybe a a wide receiver in football running a route having to change what they were doing based on another player. And they found when they were looking at the players who slept more than the players who slept less, that the ones who slept less had delayed reaction times and a delayed in their a delay in their decision making on what they were supposed to do in that given situation. So delayed reaction time, difficulty learning, difficulty in decision making. There's also a higher risk in injury. So, and this is a big one here because this was done on middle school and high school athletes. There was a study done that showed that there, when you had a chronic lack of sleep, so we're not just talking a bad night of sleep, we're talking about poor sleep patterns in general. You have a habit of not sleeping enough that this was associated with an increased rate of injury in middle school, middle school and high school athletes. So when it comes to your kids, if you have a child who is a student athlete, they need to be sleeping nine, 10 hours a night if they are growing and doing school and competing in a sport. They need a lot of sleep. If they get less than eight, you're, you're going to start seeing those increased uh, injuries because they're just not able to, to recover and repair the tissue, but also make those game time decisions and those quick reaction decisions that are going to keep them from getting hurt when they're playing their sport. The other thing here with a loss of sleep in athletes is the increased risk for illness or immunosuppression. We talked before about the cytokines, how your body has to manufacture the hormones to boost your immune system when it needs to fight off something. Well, poor sleep, ha- poor sleep habits are associated with lower resistance to illness, so even just the common cold. So you have an athlete who's not sleeping well, they're going to be at risk for getting hurt on the field, but they're also going to be at a high risk for, for getting sick off the field. It's going to keep them from being, being able to play their sport. How this relates to you and working out in the gym, we were talking about before the total sprint times decreased. Well, if you're not able to work out as hard during your, your workouts, you're not going to be able to see the progress that you want to see with your workouts. We saw a decrease in accuracy with these athletes in tennis. So you might think, well, I don't play tennis. This doesn't really apply to me. But accuracy also can be if you are trying to learn a complex skill. Maybe you're trying to learn double unders or wall balls or a gymnastics movement like a handstand or something like a barbell clean or a barbell snatch. There's elements of accuracy and balance in all of those that are negatively affected by a lack of sleep. The quicker exhaustion, that's going to apply to you because you're not able to work out for as long or have 
or have as good of effort for as long in your workouts. Then finally, risk of injury, you're going to see an increase in training injuries if you're not sleeping enough. And those training injuries are going to sideline you from being able to work out. And then if you're getting sick, if you're getting colds and, and little bugs here and there because of your immune system being suppressed because of a lack of sleep, that's going to keep you from being able to make much progress with your workouts. So I know we said this before, you know, you might not think of yourself as an athlete, but all of these things that happen to athletes, both from a beneficial standpoint when they're sleeping more and a detrimental standpoint when they're sleeping less, all of those things also apply to you and your fitness. So we've looked at the performance side of sleep and sleep deprivation. So let's look at the weight loss side or possibly weight gain. So if you think about it, if you are feeling sleepy, what do you think you're probably going to be more likely to eat for a quick shot of energy? Are you going to try to eat you know, fruits and vegetables or lean proteins or are you probably going to go grab a donut or maybe a sugary energy drink? Or maybe you are too tired and you end up just skipping the gym and you pick up takeout for dinner because you don't really have time to cook. You're just too exhausted for it. And then once you find yourself back in bed, you might be too wound up to even sleep and then you end up getting a poor night of sleep again. And this cycle of sleep deprivation is going to really start sabotaging any chance that you have of losing weight if you're trying to diet. So if you're trying to lose weight here, you need to understand this sleep and weight loss connection. If you are not sleeping enough, your metabolism will not function properly. On average, like we said before, you need that six to eight hours of sleep. If you are getting less than that, you're going to have poor hormone production of the two hormones that have a lot to do with how you eat. These two hormones are ghrelin and leptin. So there's the two key hormones in the, the weight loss process here. Ghrelin is the go hormone. It tells you when to eat and when you're sleep deprived, you have more ghrelin. So you're getting this signal to keep eating, go eat more. You're tired, go eat more, go eat more, go eat more is what this ghrelin hormone is telling you to do. Whereas leptin is the hormone that tells you to stop eating. It tells you, hey, you're full, you can go ahead and stop. I've had enough, you don't need to eat anymore, I'm good. You do not have enough leptin when you are sleep deprived. So you have more ghrelin and you have less leptin you're getting signals to eat and you're not getting the signals to stop. That's going to equal weight gain because weight gain happens when you eat more than your body needs. But if your body is giving you the signal that it needs more, you don't even really know. You just think, oh, I need this. I'm feeling this way, so I need to eat this to get me to feel better. It's these signals coming from the hormones that are thrown off because of your lack of sleep. Plus, your metabolism is going to be reduced. The amount of total calories that you are burning in a day is reduced when you're sleep deprived. So now you're getting the signals to eat and you're burning less calories than you should. So you're going to gain weight that way. And we talked before about decision making in terms of athletics. Well, decision making between two foods or how much to eat, when that is affected, you end up very quickly adding up a lot of calories, especially empty calories, when you're sleep deprived. And you're not thinking clear enough to be able to make a good decision on what you should be eating or how much you should be eating. So that's where you run into the weight gain that's coming from a, a lack of sleep is you have these hormonal issues plus you have the whole cognitive side of, of a lack of judgment that comes when you're not getting great sleep. So with sleep, there's the hormone issues that are regulatory in telling you to eat or when not to eat, but there's also the hormones that regulate your blood sugar that are affected by a lack of sleep. So the strange thing is sleep actually raises and lowers your blood sugar when you sleep. You have this cycle and it's part of your circadian rhythm where your naturally it happens, your blood sugar raises at night when you sleep. And this is not a cause of a concern. This is just a totally normal thing but you have a natural rise and a dip in your blood sugar while you sleep. Restorative sleep will help you lower your unhealthy blood sugar levels if they're too high by promoting this healthy cycle, a healthy system. Whereas decreased sleep is a risk factor for increased blood sugar levels throughout the day. And even partial sleep deprivation over one night is going to increase your insulin resistance 
which in turn can increase your, your blood sugar levels. So this is why a lack of sleep is associated with diabetes because your insulin is not working correctly and it's not telling the sugar in your bloodstream to go into the cells to be able to provide fuel for the cells. So instead you have all of this sugar floating around in your blood, the insulin is not telling it where to go and you have these elevated blood sugar levels. And you have that over a period of time, it keeps raising your blood sugar levels and eventually you get into being pre-diabetic and eventually having type two diabetes. And a large portion of that is due to poor sleep patterns. It has a lot to do obviously with what you're eating, but if you're not sleeping enough to be able to get those natural rises and drops in your blood sugar and the natural rises and drops in your insulin that are supposed to happen, they help set you up for proper function of your insulin and blood glucose, blood glucose throughout the next day, you're gonna have a, a, a syndrome develop because of that. So if you can get a better sleep pattern, you can have better blood sugar patterns. And also, those better blood sugar patterns are going to help you lose weight. It's really hard to lose weight when you have super, super high blood sugar. You need your insulin to be able to do its job so that your body can use that sugar for fuel. And when it uses up that sugar for fuel and it needs to get sugar from somewhere else, it starts to take body fat and convert it into glucose so that you can use it as usable fuel. And this is why I'm such a big fan of people logging what they're eating and logging their sleep so they can see how their eating habits change according to how they slept the night before. So if they see, and I see as their coach, that they have six hours or less of sleep night after night after night over the course of a week, and we look at their the things they're eating the next day, and they keep eating more and more you know, refined carbohydrates and sugar because they're having these this super high blood sugar that is being met by a spike in insulin and then when they have the blood sugar drops and these swings and they need to eat more carbs to feel better you can start seeing these wild swings in how much they're eating due to how much they're sleeping and once we can regulate their sleep we can do a better job of regulating their food and vice versa because the things you eat during the day are going to affect how you sleep at night. So you can look at it from both angles here. And if you're trying to lose weight, you need to look at it from both angles, not just what you're eating, but are you sleeping, I would say seven to eight hours a night if you're trying to lose weight. So I know we say six to eight is the recommended, but I would say if you're trying to lose weight, seven to eight, more if you can get it. Look at your sleep, and then look at your food and make sure you're keeping an eye on both because you have to make sure that both are, are there in the correct amounts when it comes to your sleep and the food that you're eating in order for you to actually be able to lose weight. So that's the relationship between sleep and weight loss. Now let's look at the relationship between sleep and gaining muscle. So we talked before about glucose the type of sugar that's stored in your body and your body uses it for energy. It's stored, well, it's floating around in your bloodstream throughout the day. But whenever you need to store that glucose somewhere, your body stores it in your muscles as glycogen. And it can also store it in your liver and eventually it can also convert it and turn it into body fat or adipose tissue for your body to use later on as well. But your body likes to store that sugar, that glycogen in your muscles because it produces more energy than when glucose is coming from your blood. So it's a high octane energy source for your body during activity, which is why when you fuel your body correctly with good carbohydrates and they're stored correctly in your muscles and you have a good level of muscle mass, you have great athletic performance because you have all this fuel that's in your body right there in your muscles ready to do its job. Well, when you don't get enough sleep, you don't get that maximum replenishment of muscle glycogen. So your body isn't as efficiently storing the glucose as glycogen. We talked before about how the, there's the, that effect on insulin. Well, insulin is one of the hormones that helps your body figure out what to do with the sugar that's in your bloodstream. If you're sleeping correctly, you're going to be putting that sugar from your blood into your muscles, storing it there so that the next day you have a great workout because you have plenty of energy. Another factor in gaining muscle 
and it's also very affected by your sleep, is the human growth hormone. So HGH is one of the primary compounds that allows your muscles to recover and to grow. You need it to manufacture you know, larger muscles if that's what your goal is. Or even if you're just trying to build some lean muscle tissue and build up your strength, you need that human growth hormone in order for your muscles to be able to grow. So if you're taking in plenty of protein, that's great, but you need those growth hormones to actually use those amino acids that are present in the protein. And the best time for your body to take all that protein that's floating around in your bloodstream and throughout your digestive system that, that's being absorbed happens when you sleep due to the human growth hormones. So as long as you have enough HGH in your, and you're sleeping correctly, you're going to be able to take that protein that you're eating throughout the day and put it to good use by building muscle while you sleep. Without good quality of sleep and without enough sleep, your body just can't do those things as well. Also, if you eat a meal that has protein and carbohydrates before you exercise, so at some point, it doesn't have to be right before you exercise, but just so your body has protein and carbs before exercise, and then shortly after you exercise, you eat again, you eat protein and carbohydrates, that those, that sandwich of meals around your workout is actually going to improve the release of the human growth hormone while you sleep. So this is one of those things where you can, you can do some things during the day that's going to set you up for a better night of sleep and better, better hormone function while you sleep by eating correctly around the times of your workouts. So making sure you have fuel before your workout and getting that fuel back in you after your workout is going to set you up for a more beneficial sleep when it comes to the human growth hormone and what it's doing with the protein in your body after that. So that's what happens whenever you're getting good quality sleep and you're getting enough of it in terms of your muscle mass. If you're sleeping better, you're going to be growing better muscles. But let's go the opposite direction now and look at sleep deprivation. Without adequate sleep, your muscle mass actually decreases. So it's not even so much as, hey, if you sleep well, you're going to be gaining more muscle mass. But if you don't sleep well, you're not going to be gaining muscle mass. It's even further in the worst direction, where, where if you aren't sleeping enough, you're actually going to be losing muscle mass. There was a study done that examined how sleep deprivation affected muscle gains and recovery. And the study followed these individuals who were on a, a strict sleep schedule. And during this time, one group was allowed five and a half hours of sleep, and another group was allowed eight and a half hours of sleep. And all of these individuals followed a calorie regulated diet. So they were all eating the same amount of calories per person that was in the study, per body weight, the way that was, was working with these individuals. So you had these two groups, one was sleeping five and a half hours a day, one was sleeping eight and a half hours a day, and their calories were being monitored to make sure that it was, there was equal amounts coming in per person. And what the researchers discovered was that the individuals who only slept five and a half hours had 60% less muscle mass at the end of the study. 60% less muscle mass at the end of the study. And of course, those who, the people who slept eight and a half hours had 40% more muscle mass. And I want to bring this up again, just so this is clear. The people who slept five and a half hours weren't eating any less. It wasn't like because they slept less, anything changed and they were eating less or they were making poor choices in their food. They weren't eating as much protein and they were you know, eating maybe empty carbohydrates and they were drinking a lot of extra coffee and they didn't eat enough protein for them to be able to, to keep their muscle mass. No, it was the exact same parameters on both groups when it came to their calories. The only change was that the one group slept three and a half hours less than the other one. And there was that huge swing in you had 60% less muscle mass at the end of the study in the sleep deprived group and 40% more muscle more muscle mass in the group that did sleep adequately. So obviously you can see here the, the powerful effect that sleep has on muscle recovery and muscle growth. And if you are trying to gain muscle mass, I, mean, I would put eight hours at a minimum for you if you're trying to gain muscle mass. I think if you're trying to lose weight, you know, seven to eight hours is great, more if you can, but when it comes to gaining muscle, you really need to be sleeping eight hours as a minimum, more if you can. While you sleep, you grow. 
you're not sleeping, you're not growing. Simple as that. Okay, so now that you know why sleep is so important and why a lack of sleep is so dangerous when it comes to your health and your fitness, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to get more sleep? How are we going to get better sleep? Well, if you want the long answer to that question, I want you to check out episode 33 of this podcast, Straight Shot Radio. Check out episode 33 titled Sleep Hygiene, and that's going to give you a full breakdown of how you can improve your sleep get more sleep and get better sleep. But here's a breakdown for you of sleep hygiene tips for athletes from the Sleep Foundation that I referenced earlier. The first tip here is create an appropriate sleep environment. Your sleeping space should be dark and cool with little to no noise. Another thing here that's not listed in the list here that I want to get in before I forget about it is set yourself a bedtime and a wake-up time and have a set bedtime. I'm going to be in bed with my eyes closed by 11 o'clock and I'm going to get up at 7 or 7.15 or 7.30 tomorrow morning and get that solid eight hours of sleep and plan it out, schedule it out like an appointment and hold yourself to it. It's going to be huge in creating a good sleep habit for you if you can actually set yourself a good bedtime and wake-up time and keep doing that same routine on the weekends. Uh, The next tip back to the list from Sleep Foundation, the next tip here is avoid alcohol and caffeine before bedtime. Those are going to disrupt your sleep, lead to more disturbed sleep. Uh, Third tip here, stay away from electronics in the hours before bedtime. Anything that's going to emit a blue light like TVs, cell phones, computers, if you can't put a blue light filter on it, uh, you really should be turning it off several hours before bed or at least an hour before bed. If you have a blue light filter in your phone, which I think probably all of you do, figure out where that blue light filter is and have it turn on automatically at 6 p.m. And that's going to be really helpful in helping your eyes kind of wind down as the evening goes on so that you're not filling your eyes with this blue light that's disrupting your circadian rhythm and keeping you from falling asleep easily. Next tip here is have a wind down routine. So reading, taking a bath, meditating, however you want to stretch, mobilize, whatever you want to do to help you relax and get ready for sleep. The next thing here, and this is one that I've never, I've never had an issue really falling asleep, but I know a lot of people that do. And if you are one of the people that lays in bed and you're tossing a turn, you just can't get to sleep. It's actually not a bad idea to get up, get out of bed. If you haven't fallen asleep after like 20 minutes, get out of bed and go do some type of quiet activity in a different space outside of your room until you feel sleepy, maybe reading or something like that, and then go back to bed after that, and you'll probably have an easier time falling asleep. Now, when it comes to being an athlete or if you're a person who works out, here's some other tips that's going to be more relevant to to just you. So first one here is avoid overtraining. You want to keep a consistent training schedule that is progressive, that doesn't overload you, that allows for recovery, where you have enough rest days, you're not pushing yourself to the max or that red line every single workout. When you overexert yourself, you feel tired after the workout, you feel beat down, seems like, hey, you should probably get a great night of sleep. It doesn't work that way. You actually end up sleeping worse. You don't recover, and then the next day you have poor workouts, and you still try to push it, and then you don't sleep that next night. You see how that cycle starts, and that's why when you overtrain, people even have have emotional distress during over seasons of overtraining as athletes and as people who work out because it's just as much of, of psychological fatigue as it is physiological fatigue. The next tip that the Sleep Foundation has for people who work out and and your sleep is avoid training and competitions that are too early or too late. Now, I know this is tough if you have to work out in the morning because of your schedule or if you have to work out late at night because of your schedule, you've got to get it done. But if you can do anything to move your schedule around where you're not working out before bed, that's super helpful. That's uh, To me, I believe personally that that's much worse than working out first thing in the morning. But trouble with working out first thing in the morning is a lot of times you'll end up having disrupted sleep kind of earlier in the morning because your body's kind of getting ready to rev up and start working out first thing in the morning. But again, if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. So that's one of the the tips here that, yeah, be nice in a perfect situation. Uh, If you're going to do a competition or a race, try not to pick something that's super early or super late. But sometimes those competitions are super early and super late and you've just got to, you've just got to deal with it. The next tip here for athletes and anyone who works out, I keep saying athlete, but understand if you're working out, you're an athlete. I've said it before. But if you're going to take naps, try to keep them brief. So no more than an hour 
actually half an hour if you really can do it. And try not to take any naps after 3 p.m. That's going to affect your sleep for the evening that night. And the last tip here is try to reduce stressors because mental stress affects your sleep quality, but it also mental, mental stress is also going to impact your physical performance as well. Your body can't differentiate between mental stress and physical stress, so it just kind of piles all of them up as cumulative stress, and it ends up getting to the point of where both your mental state and your physical state are attached to the point of where you can't perform or uh, experience mental well-being because you are are just way too stressed out. So whatever you can do to reduce stress in your life is going to help you sleep better. It's also going to help you perform your workouts better. It's going to help you manage your your weight better. It's going to help you gain more muscle mass if that's your goal as well. So I hope everything that we talked about today can give you a new appreciation for good quality sleep and a healthy fear of sleep deprivation when it comes to your overall health. Because remember, if you are training hard and eating correctly, that is awesome. But if you are not sleeping correctly, along with those two things, you are not just not making the gains that you want to be making in your fitness, you might actually be moving moving backwards despite your best training and nutrition efforts. So please, please, please take your sleep seriously and make some steps today to start improving it just a little bit at a time. It's just like working out, right? You can't jump into, you know, squatting 400 pounds, you got to start squatting the bar. Okay, so let's start with your sleep, figure out how to get more sleep, adjust your schedule, then figure out how to get better sleep, deeper sleep, and do all those little tweaks along the way to make sure that you are optimizing your sleep. And set some goals for yourself. Same thing when it comes to like your workouts or your nutrition. You have to set some small goals for yourself when it comes to your sleep. If you're only sleeping six hours right now, Try to get six and a half for the next two weeks, and then try to bump it up to seven. So you gradually work yourself up. If you need some help with it, again, that's what we do here as coaches. Just head over to straightshottraining.com, and we'll get you all sorted there. Just click on that button that says Request a Coach. Thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. If you could take a second to leave us a rating on whatever platform you're currently listening to the show on, that would be awesome. Please share this episode with a friend, maybe somebody you know who isn't getting enough sleep. Uh, And make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you can get notifications for when our next episode comes out. Really quick before I sign off here, I want to give a quick shout out to my listeners in Queensland, Australia. I found out this week that one-fifth of my show's downloads come from Queensland, Australia. So thank you all for listening. I'm not sure how my show has gotten passed around so much down in Australia, but I really appreciate it. I've actually reached out to the local government in Queensland. They have a really cool health initiative that I would love to talk to somebody about. So if you're listening and anybody has any connections there, I'd love to have them on the show to talk about it. If you are a gym owner, or an athlete in Queensland, uh, I'd love to have you on the show. I'm just, I'm not sure why I, I've gotten a following in Australia, but I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you all for listening. Uh, again, most of my downloads come from the US, and so it was a little bit of a surprise for me. But thank you to everyone who listens around the world, wherever you are. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. Hopefully, I've been able to help you out with something that I've shared with you today. So thank you so much, and have a great week, everybody. 